Hello, Jason Niemeyer here again. We're going to revisit how to remove an object from a cluttered background. So you can make better eBay pictures, this kind of thing, or any advertising kind of pictures. You want to get rid of those cluttered backgrounds so you can draw more attention to your product. We've already done this once before, but this method is going to show you how to do it much faster and much quicker. I'm also going to show you how you don't need to use a pen tool with a Wacom tablet. You can do it with a mouse, and that's exactly what I'm going to use right here to show you how to do this. What we're going to do this with today is the all feared and misunderstood pen tool. If you click on the pen tool, you're more than apt to get the first button here is what's going to be selected in sh is shape layers. Now, if you do have that one selected and you start using a pen tool, you'll notice that what you're starting to get is a bunch of shapes. And then those shapes will be filled with the color that you have selected here. So if you have selected a purplish color and you start doing these shapes, you're going to get a, a whole new shape. It's the same shape. That's why it's not changing color. Let's uh, go back to the can in question, and then I'll show you new shapes with the purple color. This isn't what we want. I just spent the last couple minutes telling you about something we don't even really want. So we want to make sure the next button is selected, which would be the Paths button. That's very important. This was what makes this tool so useful. Now we're going to start on an area of a can where it begins to go round, because it's the round areas that can be a little more difficult. It's pretty easy to click straight lines. But this is easy. We'll start right here on the corner where it begins to get round, and you notice the first radius is from here to where the can's other bottom part starts to come out. So that's a good round curve that we need to get. We'll click again. Don't take your finger off the mouse button. In fact, drag it and pull it. You'll get what we call a node handle. And you drag it and pull it, start moving around. You notice how that line, pay attention to that line, how it curves around the area we need to curve to. Okay, now we need to draw a line around the real base of the can, and it's going to come from that center of that node point. So we're just going to come over here and make another quick click, and then we're going to drag. Just keep playing with the line until you can see exactly that it's coming to the bottom. We want it right there. Now notice how the line still isn't quite to the bottom of the image. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here and we're going to grab this end of this node. But hold the Alt button down until you get this funny arrow. And then when you get that arrow, you can pull that line right straight down to the bottom of that can. Once you get good at this, you can do this quite fast. Now come back over here to the edge of the can and drop another node. And we're going to have to drag that line a little bit till we get it where we want it. And if it ain't quite there, we'll grab that node key on that other line and move it down so we can tuck it in there right where we want it. Now let's go back up to the top of the can. And we're going to click on a spot right there where it will bring that line all the way up to the top of the can. And then we got a few more curves in here, some smaller ones that we can make. Curve there. We'll drop another line here. Keep going back up to the top of the can. Click there. A little click there. And we're going to scroll over. We're going to draw a line here. Drag it a little bit so we can get that arc. We've got to go over the arc of the pop tab. Right there. We're going to make a quick arc right here. And it's not going to quite cooperate for us because I got this one pulled out too far. So we can make a quick adjustment. Now we got to make another quick adjustment over here. Make a node there. Come down here. Tuck it in. Tuck those lines in. Oh, I dropped one too many there. So you can always back up in your history's dialog box if you need to. I do it all the time. We uh, are always capable of making mistakes. And then just follow the can all the way down till you get where you started. And make one last click. When you get that little circle on your pen, you know you're in there. And that's it. You're done. 
But notice we just have a line around the can now. That's all we've got. What we want is a selection marquee. So we have to go to the Paths folder in the History dialog box, or the Layers dialog box. I mean, you should have a Paths folder in there. Click that. You notice there's a bunch of buttons on the bottom. We want that Crawling Ants selection marquee. And that's the third button here. If you click that, then that turns it into the Crawling or Marching Ants, that is, people like to call it selection marquee. And from there, on your keyboard, Control C. And we can go to a different all white page ready to go. Control V, which is the paste command. And it didn't work. Oh, yeah, it did. <coughs> now we noticed, we go back over to the layers. Got one too many because my computer was a little slow and I was getting excited. But at any rate, we can grab the paint bucket and toss in on the background layer, so make sure you're selected to the background layer, any color that you want to switch the background color if you want, if you don't want white. Pretty easy stuff. Um, if you want to add a little shadow in there, come down here and get yourself a, kind of a dark gray. And this is where you adjust your opacity again, like I've shown you before. Turn that opacity way down and get to the bottom of the can and grab your airbrush tool and just come in here. I'll we'll make the brush a little bit bigger. Just come in here and we'll just do a little hint of a shadow in there. And we got a little carried away. You're not going to paint on the can because the can is a different layer. So we're just painting on the background behind it. And we're getting a little shadow going on in there. Make the shadow a little darker when it's closer to the object. It makes it look more realistic. There you go. We are done with this tutorial. I hope you found this a little faster then the other method, either way, still gets you the same result. Uh, use the pen tool. It is an awesome tool. Again, very misunderstood and not a lot of people use it. But I think you're going to use it a lot now because now you can uh, use it and use it well. You get real good with it. Uh, you can do a lot of things with it. My name is Jason Niemeyer. Stick around. i got more fun tutorials coming out. Bye-bye.